Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland love every racing moment visit hri.ie all right, you're very welcome along to this week's Friday Night Racing. As we've just heard, brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. Or you can follow the new Twitter handle, at HRI Racing, for all your details. Our guest this week is uh, joining us on Skype. It's Wayne Lord. And Wayne, good morning to you. Good afternoon to you, indeed. How are you? Good afternoon, lads. How are you? Now, um, we're recording this a little bit earlier than usual because you've got a busy, busy night ahead of you. A full book of rides at Dundalk. So, um, may as well get straight into that. How, what, what's your preparation like on a day like today? Yeah, um, I just went through their farm last night and um, so to see what, what we have. And so I have a few nice rides tonight, so hopefully a few can go and well. In terms of actually preparing on the day of a, a race card like this, what's that like? Do you have to like eat at a certain time during the day? Is, are you counting backwards from the first race? Or is it at this stage, because you're so experienced... Is it just an ebb and flow kind of into it and try and get up for the very last second when they're just about to go to post? Um, no, it, it's it's pretty straightforward. Just look at their runs last night um, or, or from the last day and see see if we can do anything different to, to improve them or do the same thing again to make their form stand out. You must have a good agent. You have six different trainers tonight as well. Yeah, Ryan does a very good job. So... Um, He's, he's kept busy and at this time of year, which is good. Uh, how important is the winter series for you? I know, obviously, like Dunica is uh, probably won't be riding there uh, for the winter. A lot of jockeys go elsewhere, but how important is it for you in terms of the context of the year, Wayne? Ah, oh, look, it, it's great. I, I like riding up there because it keeps me fit for the winter. Um, it's on one night, maybe two nights a week, but um, it keep, keeps you fit and keeps your, your mind on the ball. Did they, ha they obviously have had a controversy over the surface and they've relayed it. How have you found it since they've relayed it? It's riding very well, actually. Um, the spring is back in it um, and it, it feels like it's riding well. Obviously, we wanted to talk to you after some, uh, some recent success. You've been jet-setting uh, success in America and then straight down to the Melbourne Cup immediately afterwards. So I think, was it the Friday or Saturday at Santa Anita and the following Monday slash Tuesday? Uh, do you know what day of the week it is at the moment or is your body clock back to, to normal yeah. just yet? Yeah, it's back, it's back fairly quick. We have two kids at home to get up very early. So, um, I know, look, it, it's, a, it's a great position to be in and, and I'm lucky that I'm able to do it. How did it... So, tell people exactly what happened. You were, you were in the States and had your first win at the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, it's a huge achievement. Um, she's been a very good filly, Eridessa, for me all year. But um, Joseph was very happy with her out there. She looked well and he, he said she was in great form. So, it was just go through the race as best we could and we had a good draw and the ones beside me were slotting in and probably the only one that was going to go forward as much as we wanted to go was in five. So that gave me an extra little bit of a chance to get out and get into a good position. It went like clockwork for you really, didn't it? Yeah, look, you couldn't have rolled it any better. Um, I, she jumped smart. I had to give her a squeeze to get up into stride. And once I was up into stride and I in a position that I was happy, I was able to bring her back on the bride and get her travelling. Where would that stand in terms of your career achievements, number one? It's definitely up there. Look, you can make a case for all your but to ride a Breeders' Cup winner um, is fantastic. It's an achievement that you always want to um, look for, um, and when you get it, it's fantastic. What's that occasion actually like then for you as somebody who at this stage is, is experienced and yet at the same time you're trying to do something new, it's a first for you. Is there a little bit of extra nerves when you know that the horse is so good and this is a chance for you to create a bit, a bit of history for yourself as well? Yeah, I wouldn't say nerves. It's just you're, you're just trying to make sure everything goes to plan um, rather than being nervous about the race. Um, you just have a plan in your head and if that, if that doesn't work, you have to go to plan B or C, whatever it is, but you're just going out focused and... Um, having a picture in your head what, 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 you want, what you want to happen. Is that the value of experience, that there isn't nerves around something like this? Would you have been nervous, say, if this had happened 10 years ago? Uh, I, would have I would have thought so. Um, lucky enough that I ride in good races um, uh, everywhere. So you kind of get used to um, getting used to maybe the pressure or what have you of it. What, what's that experience like riding against uh, American jockeys? It must be kind of like 
almost like a football team playing in Europe that there's just it's a different style and uh, you know are they better or worse or are they kind of are they just different it's different but you're going out there riding on a track that you don't really know 100 mm. percent these lads are riding on the track every day um it's not like going to Dundalk I could follow lads around Dundalk and when you're following them all year round you know what they do you know how they ride um and when you're going out there you have someone in front of you that's that you're not used to following in a race and what they can do in a race. So that's why you kind of have to do a bit of homework. And, but the most important thing is once you're, you know the horse that you're riding is probably the most important part. I suppose the, not, not the ironic thing about Iridesa was, but you've, you know, you teamed up with Bally Doyle and you teamed up with uh, Aidan in a move to kind of, I suppose, to change your career when, when you finished up with the Stacks or whatever. But it was for Joseph that she rode Iridesa, which is just how it works, I suppose. Yeah, I, um, I'm just lucky enough that I fell in for the ride. I've got on very well with her, and as it happens, you know, we're after having great success. It's just staggering what Joseph is doing at such a, an early age, Wayne. I mean, you know, Dunnock are probably going to go training sooner or later, but Joseph's achievements, um, people just seem to take it as granted at this stage. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. He's after winning the Melbourne Cup, now he's after um, winning the Breeders' Cup, and he, he was the youngest person to do it as a jockey as well. So nice. all them records are are being broken and you know he's he's doing a fantastic job at it. it was uh, I think it was it was basically said that he could have had three winners in three different continents in, in three days yeah so and essentially three races yeah days. and obviously the, the the Melbourne Cup was very close but um for, from your own perspective I thought you were very um magnanimous in defeat after the race because Il Paradiso was you would have to say was a little bit unlucky in the Melbourne Cup um, he, he was a bit, but the only thing is, I wanted to ride him like he's always ridden in the first two or three. And when we jumped out of the stalls so slow, going past the winning post the first time, if you told me I was going to be third or fourth or fifth, I'd have taken it. Um, so because I jumped so slow, I had to just bide my time and go the shortest way. I got a good, good run through the race. Um, you know, w when you're flying home like that, you always look really unlucky. At the same time, I passed the line in fourth place, mm. um, promoted the third. So, you know, if I was second, maybe I would have been unlucky, but there was still three horses in front of me officially. How do you deal with, sorry, I'm just when I mentioned this, how do you deal with the jet lag from Ireland to Santa Anita to Melbourne back? Like, at what point, what, 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 what did the time on your watch say when you were travelling the world? I don't know. The iPhone changes itself. So, so you don't know. you don't stay on Irish time, or you don't stay. You don't try and transfer. Like you, there's no tricks. It's just like sleep when you can. No, um, I'm good to sleep when I go to bed. I sleep. I could fall asleep straight away. Um, I sleep for you know whatever six and a half seven hours, and I'm up again. Now in America, it's the time difference. I was up every morning, at probably at five, because it was early or late morning at home. So I just got out of bed. That was it. And when you went to Australia, it was fine, was it? Yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it was grand. I was only there for, um, I landed Monday morning and I rode Tuesday and I left Tuesday night, so I wasn't there long enough to, to fall into any routine. Right. I, well, I yeah. do think there's something unique. So, like, you've got some weird physicality that the rest of us are like, ah, oh, drooling in the back, kind of going, I don't understand what, uh, what time it is. And you're able to get up on a horse and control the horse and and tell the horse what to do at precisely the right moment. And one of the toughest races to ride in in the world, you would argue, in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, look, it, you get used to it. It's just part and parcel of, of the job, and you sleep while you can, and you stay awake while you can. He's a laid-back character. But the, the Irish pursuit of the Melbourne Cup has become, like, when Derwell Well did it, it was unheard of, but now it's almost expected that we'll win it or go very close. And uh, Willie Mullins had a horse running in it a couple of years ago and he went over to Australia to watch the horse gallop watch the horse gallop and flew back to Ireland so he, he went to Australia spent less than 24 hours there like I think he spent around 18 hours there and just flew back to Ireland that was only to watch the horse gallop and um, maybe he Maybe he was right. Maybe he was going first class, but um, I, I was. I couldn't get over that. So I, don't, I don't like long-term flights, and to do that, um, these people are. I don't know. They're different. That's the extra quality of research that these guys are doing. Yeah. That leaves us in the in the halfpenny shade. Um, Wayne, talk to us a little bit about how you became good, and, and that was interesting. That um, 
Johnny was talking about uh, getting in with Bally Doyle. That's obviously a, a big thing for any jockey, given the quality of horses that they have. How did that come about? Um, I was riding for, for, for Tommy Stack and Fozzie for, um, I think it was like 16 years um, when I was an apprentice. So then I started with David Watch when I rode for him for 12. And then David retired and that was it. David retired that year and, and um, that winter I was asked would I have an interest in going to Bally Doyle and, you know, if you were offered, if you were asked, would you like to join Bally Doyle with, with horses like that? You'd be kind of looking forward, and the the answer was fairly easy. And so, when you get there, is there a, an automatic hierarchy of jockeys? Do you automatically pick? Is it is it your number three, or can you move up? How does that work? No, it does no work. You could just you just get in there and do your work, and you you, you work for what you can achieve. Was it tough knowing that you know you would be, f if not feeding off scraps, that you know you you would be, you you probably wouldn't be riding a favourite necessarily that often, and you would have to rely on the bits and pieces that fell into place for you. You wouldn't. Whereas with obviously with David and and Tommy Sack, it was like you were a stable jockey in effect. Yeah, I suppose. Um, but I suppose you'd be going in there, and like prices or anything like that don't matter, but. Aidan always runs three, four in, in all of them group ones and then big race and um and with their pedigrees and they're entitled to be good horses. So you can be on a winner at any stage. That's the thing as well. So if he ran four or five in the derby, they might all be by Galileo, uh, they might all be quite lightly raced and are you all, you're all nearly a little bit in the dark going to the racetrack because of the way these horses can develop. Um, this, this horse might actually turn out to be the best of them today and also I just might get luck and run and you look at Porrick Beggy winning two derbies and you know 50 to one shots or whatever. Yeah, it's just all oh, luck. You, do, you don't know. Um, horses step up on the track which might show you a whole pile at home. So it's, it's um, you know, you might have a little idea but you don't know 100% every day. What's Aiden like? Is is that genius like very apparent every day you're in there, or uh, is he just a normal bloke? Yeah, he's just normal, but he he does his job very well, um, and you know it's it's all routine. So we all know what we have to do, and we just go and do it. Where are you from, Wayne? I'm from Cork, um, Upton, not too far from John Murphy. So um, it's probably a big horsey country down there for point to point. So that's where I was kind of growing up. My father has done a bit of um, as an amateur jockey and things like that, so pony racing, so it all kind of materialised from there. Were you good as a kid? I don't know. Am I good now? I don't know. Ah, come on, um, you're, you're pretty good now. Just, you, you've just had a winner at the Breeders' Cup, so you know you're good. Yeah, look, it, as a, you just go out and you try and do your best every day. Um, some days it's not your best. You might make a wrong decision, but that's that's the joys of it. You, you, you can't get it right all the time, so you have to just go out and do your best the whole time. And and when you're a kid, though, you're, in your favor. when you're a kid, your best must have been good enough to be winning some races. Yeah, I I done well. I rode plenty of pony race winners, and then I went to um, Tom tomorrow was down pony race Monday in Cork, and he asked me would I like to join him to be an apprentice. So um, of course, didn't like school, all that kind of thing. So I jumped at it. So that was your route in, you, did you go to race you, or you just went the straight apprenticeship? No, I went straight apprenticeship to um, Banch at the time um, where he had his yard there. So um, that was the start of it. It's, it's interesting looking at your stats like since uh, 2005 inclusive, you've never had less than 400 Irish uh, rides in a season. And, um, you know, I, how, how much has it stood to you down the years how light you are that you could, obviously it's not as relevant now, but that you could do those light weights without a problem? Oh, it's a huge difference. Um, you know, I, I can go home and go through the paper and things like that, and then you have lads that are rushing to go and lo lose two or three pounds or what have you. I don't have to do that, so it has to be, has to be a help. As, in conversely, then is Dunica necessarily stronger than you in the last two hundred yards of race because he's clearly bigger than you, or is it as, is it not as simple as that? Because Dunica obviously should be about eleven or twelve stone natural weight. Yeah, I'd say because what's underneath is probably a bit more important than, than you know, um, you're, you're helping the horse, but if the horse is more willing than the other horse, you have a bigger chance. How important is the jockey's strength in a finish, and is it overstated by people? Uh, I think it might be overstated a bit. Um, you could have a big, strong fella that gets his horse unbalanced, and you could have a weak fella that's probably doing a little bit less, but his horse is running more from. Mm.
Mm. It's, it's, I suppose it's almost like the horse feeding you as little as possible in the sense that you're, you're just kind of part of the, the art of, of, of the movement rather than kind of being an imposition on the horse as well, that it's all seamless. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're encouraging it to go forward, but all of them tell you have to keep it balanced and keep it in rhythm and keep it going forward. Um, so, you know, it's probably not all about the strength either. What about Dunica? Just what I know he's been riding unbelievably good horses, but um, starving yourself for two or three years mustn't be easy either. No, it must be, it must be extremely hard, um, and he, he's doing it very well. You know, he's gone out there, he's thinking of the race, he's putting horses in perfect positions and um, and they're winning. So um, he's he, he's a credit to himself for doing it. I, I know obviously you're unbelievably busy and we're going to let you go now to, to um, do some work before you get to Dundalk this evening. Um, what is the winter like for uh, flat jockey? Like, how busy are you day to day? And, and is it something that you, you now at a stage of your career where you don't need to be as busy in the winter as maybe you did when you were younger. How does that work for you? Um, I probably don't need to be as busy as I am. Um, luckily, I've, I've two months off, so I don't go back to Valley Diet till the middle of January. So I only go racing on a Friday night. Um, I like hunting, so I do a bit of hunting. So I, I try to work with Joe before racing. So I kind of try and keep myself busy and fit. Um, and I go on a holiday with the, with the family in a couple of weeks. And do you need to give your body time to recover after a long season like that? Is that is that part of this? Is there a little bit of rest involved to just make sure that you're back going? Or is that actually something that, as a jockey, and, and given you don't have that many weight issues, or no weight issues as we've established, you're actually fine anyway? Yeah, I'm fine anyway, but at the same time, you know, early mornings, home late at night, you like to get get your body um, recharged for the for the season ahead. So that that's why I kind of just take it easy a little bit. Um, I stay riding as much as I can on, on race days to keep myself at a fit level. But um, the rest of the week, I just like to recharge the batteries for the year ahead. Yeah, very nice. Um, any of your uh, horses tonight that we should be looking out for? In Six rides, including and a newcomer for Josephine, the first by no name ever, who I think is going to go off hot favour when. Yeah, um, she, she's a well-bred filly. She cost plenty as, as a breeze up sale in France, I think. I don't know anything about it. Um, so I'm hoping the the pedigree will show. So we'll probably, I haven't spoke to Don Joseph yet, so we'll um, see what he says about her later on. I have a horse for John McConnell that I won on um, two weeks ago. I thought he won with a little bit in hand, so I'm, I'm drawn a little bit wide, but we'll see what I can do. I think he's a... A good ride. What, what's Dundalk like in that regard? When, like, you're in a rock and a hard place, we'll say if you're drawing 13 or 14, um, over really any trip, you know, obviously five would be bad, but what, what's your what's your general way of dealing with that? Are you thinking, see what the first furlong is like, or, or try to get out or drop in? Yeah, there was a mile and a half race the other day I rode for Joseph. I was drawing the widest, and I said I'd jump smart and try and get in mid-division. It was a mile and a quarter. We haven't much of a run up to the first bend. So I went down to the bend, kind of five deep, and I kind of said, right, I'm not staying out here. So I took back the slot in, and the minute I did, the race steadied up, yeah. and I knew I was shite, and yeah. that was it. So I just stayed there and, and bided my time. It was, you can't make a move through the middle of the race like that. So anyway, it didn't work out. So at least when you're riding for Joseph, he understands that. And you just hopefully have a better draw the next day. Like we, we talk about, you know, John Giles might kind of um, knock it, but tactics in football, we talk about tactics, tactics, tactics. What Wayne said there, it's so important in racing, and you don't even see it where you go out with a plan, but you're riding against very, very good riders who know Dundalk well, and they know if they're in front, pull back because I'm in front now, and I'll screw this up for as many people as I can. And, you know, I find that interesting because. Anyone who backed your horse, Wayne, will probably be going, oh, like, Lord, he's given that a joke of a ride. What was he thinking? Why didn't he kick on? You're like, well, that's actually, I'm trying to explain to you, you know? But you can't, you, you, I'd have raced five wide and I couldn't, I wouldn't have got in. So mm. I'd have gave away a lot of ground and I probably would have, might have been beaten whatever I was beaten, but she mm. probably would have had an extremely hard race. For, but... Do you, do you expect Joseph to give you a good few rides now? Because obviously Dunica doesn't have major designs in riding at Dundalk this winter. No, jo Joseph has a lot of lads riding out down there as well. So I, I think he just tries to look after everybody. It's a good time of the year to do that. So anything we get, be happy to have it. Listen, Wayne, thanks a million for joining us today. Best of luck tonight and uh, congratulations on an amazing season. Thank you very much.
So Thank Wayne, you. Wayne Lord in there giving us um, the insight into the jet setting lifestyle. Mm. I would be dead after that. Yeah, um, I remember, I remember um, a, a, a woman I knew. She she took a day off work one time because she was jet lagged, but she she was actually flying back from England. And they were kind of saying at work, like, you're, you're doing this a bit too often now. You're taking fairly spurious sick days. But she genuinely claimed that she was jet lagged after coming back from a flight from London. Not sure um, there's much science behind that, is there? No, there, I wouldn't fancy her having a, Wayne's ordeal there, would you? Unless uh, she had Willie Mullins' first class treatment maybe on, the, right. on the... But um, he's, he's such an understated guy. Like, he's, uh, he's a world-class jockey that's um, probably... <laughs> Maybe didn't get the credit he deserved because he wasn't in a big, a really big job for sort of most of his career. And then when he got the job with Aiden, um, you know, he was clearly three or four or five in the pecking order. But um, we we did a we did a piece with Vinnie Percher in the week, um, and I know Vinnie was in here as well. But he was making the point that I'd prefer to be playing sort of uh, twenty games a season for Dundalk than thirty five for somebody that's not as good. And Wayne's. Kind of actually was probably the same. I'm I'm going to be getting um, fewer favourites for for Aiden, but I will. And from time to time, I'll be playing in big games. And then he, he ends up riding a Breeders' Cup winner. But what I admire most about him is he's so humble and he's he's just not. He never praises himself. He just gets on with it. Yeah, oh, for sure. Friday night racing is brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. We're going to preview the weekend's racing and try and pick a winner eventually. Right after this. Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland Love every racing moment Visit hri.ie all right, you're very welcome back to Friday Night Racing and uh, Johnny's going to try and pick us a winner here. The Tote Irish Inter Jockeys Fund continues to remain stuck on €7,549 after Rock de Bone ran a gallant race but ultimately came up short, bringing, bringing your streak to 10 in a row. 10 not out. The magic 10. I think one of them was Tom Malone. It was, yeah. Mm. I put him up as my Irish field nap as well and uh, David Jennings has basically been pretty much clear for most of the year he's just had an unbelievable year and uh, rocked it. usually my naps are kind of a little bit left field so so it's kind of like when you're picking the lotto numbers there's not much point picking the numbers that everyone else will pick because the prize you know you won't get as much money if it does come off but uh, the, my nap last weekend was tipped by like nine people oh no which was really unusual um, so it was a fairly obvious nap but it finished second, and then that what, was what bad. price did it go off? Oh, it was well back. It was like seven to four or something. I I, I thought it'd be a lot bigger than that, being honest. But um, then uh, to add insult to injury, uh, Geno tipped Bally Oshin, who was I think a five to one chance or thereabouts to win at Navin. And um, if if we're on a ten uh, week losing streak, he must be. He's red hot at the moment. Ever since he got married, he actually got married at the start of the year. There's something in that there. Two Johnny. and two. Put put two and two together and get. 17 maybe but and next week you're going to come in saying you're engaged is that what's going to happen yeah I'm engaged um, and the reason we're getting engaged is because I really need a winner yeah it's a legitimate enough I mean a winner in the equine sense you're, you know. you're betrothed would uh, understand best for it Abs absolutely um no, probably not. Probably not to be fair. But general, general is that. So anyway, we have we have like seven weeks left to reel them in. So there's still hope. The Winter Festival of Punchestown is a highlight on the home front this weekend with a Grade One. Morgiana Hurdle is the feature over the two days. The opening day of the November meeting at Cheltenham failed to beat the weather, obviously. But hopefully, the remaining two days get the green light after an inspection this afternoon. Three o'clock. Yeah. So uh, by the it, time this airs, you should know. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate. Um, you know, we've had a couple of meetings called off recently. Uh, you know, last winter, if you wanted a ground reliant uh, winter horse, you didn't really have the chance. And it's kind of almost going to the other extreme now. And that if if this continues, we may have a lot of cancellations. But um, Cheltenham, hopefully, it'll get the green light because there's been some unbelievably good performances uh, in November so far from Irish horses. And I suppose most recently, Duvan coming back at Clonmel yesterday and winning with his head in his chest was was great to see, really. Yeah, because I mean, when a horse is out for as long as he vans out, there's always concerns. Yeah, and, you know, they they generally don't come back, you know, and he did have serious injuries, and uh, 
I I uh, was wasn't sure what to expect from Duvan like many people because he'd been off for five hundred odd days, but um he wasn't, you know, you wouldn't say he was back to his best, but there was huge promise there. And funnily enough, the, if Altior abandons the Queen Mother chase two-mile division this year, Duvan is back in the picture again, which is great. You know, um, many of us would have backed him in Cheltenham when he fell um, two years ago and wondered what might have been, but the fire still burns. He's, he's still only nine as well. He's not, like for, he's not that old and he's lightly raced. OK, what are you looking at this weekend? Yeah, I guess we'll probably not going to go into Cheltenham just in case. Um, Punch Sound is on Saturday, um, and what's interesting here is that the sponsors Unibet have uh, moved the Morgiana car to a Saturday, so it doesn't clash with their big race on the Sunday. So it'll be interesting how that works out for Punch Sound because Saturday is not traditionally, um, uh, you know, it's, it's not traditionally an Irish kind of strong um, day of the week. It's more of a Sunday. But um, Willie Mullins has three of the five runners declared uh, as well as two kind of long shots so it's a bit unsatisfactory from that regard but it's actually still a very good race Charger, Saldier, Classical Dream very good horses, I'm a big fan of Saldier um, he's my preference at the prices now I, I haven't heard anything from the various stables but uh, I like Saldier in that. Okay, what else? And um, before that, we have the Elliott Group, Craddockstown, Novice Chase, and um, I think the the uh, Jiggenstown runners here is interest. Davy Russell is back riding good Jiggenstown horses this weekend. There was a, a bit of a conflab about what was going on there, but um, he's riding uh, a Claire de Buffo in this. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually a very nice race. I do like Moon Over Germany, but I might give another chance to uh, Daily Tiger as well. I, probably Moon Over Germany, but it's, it's a tough little race, that, um, and that's kind of, the I suppose, the appetizer for the Morgiana. Okay. Um, and then we're into Sunday. Sunday's Cork National Day, which is obviously the the, the, the biggest day of the year for uh, the Mallow Track. Um, before that, just looking at uh, Punchestown, they've this should have been the Morgiana card, but they changed it around to kind of uh, suit the sponsor in that regard. So they've uh, a three-year-old hurdle and a Grade Two novice chase in which Davy Russell is riding Battle Over Doyen, who was ridden by. Um, Keith Dunne, who at Galway, I, I don't, I just don't know what Michael O'Leary is doing. He just, he just never, he, he, like he's just so unpredictable. He gave, he gave an interview to the Racing Post this week where he explained quite reasonably that Davy Russell would not be riding horse A, B and C because in the same race to Cheltenham he'd be riding horses D, E and F for other connections. Um, now he might have been jumping the gun a bit in that regard, but that was... Um, so essentially he doesn't want to give Davy Russell inside information on no, horses no. he's going to be going up against. N well, <laughs> not inside information. You know what I mean? Like uh, more. What's the point him riding Delta Work when he's going to be riding presenting Percy in the Gold Cup? Now, that's a bit of a jumping of the gun because Delta Work is actually a shorter price than presenting Percy in some of the books. Um, but you know, jumping the gun in what way? In that they could well, have Davy Russell if they wanted. Well, well, Davy might not be riding um, presenting Percy. He might well want to ride Delta Work. That's that's at the moment that's probably a fifty-fifty shot. Oh, he could. So, he can he, I th he's, he's jumping the gun to say, oh, he'll definitely be riding such and such. He'll definitely be riding in Vi Allen in the, we'll say, in the Supreme when I might want to run whatever, like Abracadabras or something. Um, so he, may, he might be jumping the gun there. But anyway, Eddie O'Leary said, I think, today that we've had a chat and everything is fine again. So Davy lost the job a few years ago, then kind of came back and rode a load of good horses whilst other jockeys went their different ways from Jiggenstown had a strange, uh, you know, loss of love from the operation this year, but now everything seems to be fine again. In Can you give us something to talk about? In the aftermath of some big wins last year as well. Yeah, yeah, and, like, he, nobody would argue that he's regressed as a rider, um, but in any event, uh, but he's, he Battle Over Dying, I think, is a good thing in that race. I think he's, he's very exciting. That's the uh, Lehman Valerie Brennan Memorial Florida Pearl Novice Steeple Chase on Sunday. Before we get to your uh, tip for the weekend, I just want to talk about the uh, 2019 Horse Racing Ireland Awards. The nominees have been announced. Um, just gonna, I'm just going to talk about the Horse of the Year. Six nominations Tiger Roll, Album Photo, Camboy, Apple's Jade, and Magical and Iridessa. Is it a shoe in when you've got a tiger roll that it has to be that, or is album photo in the? Uh, 
yeah, I, I'd say Tiger Roll will just go back to win the race again and obviously to win at Cheltenham. And he was also one of the uh, O'Leary kind of um, debates during the week why why he might not go to Aintree, which um, was was strange enough comments. But uh, no, I, I'd say he will win it, to be honest. And hopefully he goes back for a historic third Grand National attempt anyway. I don't anyway. give a toss about history or whatever the line was. Yeah, yeah. Well, he also made a strange correlation between the weight you'd carry and... Um, uh, the the prospect of maybe falling in the Grand National, which um, really didn't make any sense. But anyway, that's that's Michael. Um, isn't this just a shot across the bows of the English handicapper saying, "Come on, if you want to, if you want everybody to come and see this piece of history, be kind to our horse." Yeah, it's, it's how a promoter would deal with the. That's exactly what opponent it is. Opponent in a prize fight. It's like, well, my guy's got all the money. He's bringing yeah. the purse. Yeah. Yeah, I want seventy five percent. Be nice to him. Yeah, yeah. So that's ex- that's exactly what happened, actually. Yeah, as opposed to like, oh, he's not going to run. It's just a PR thing. Well, why wouldn't he run? I mean, he's he has he has suffered a mishap in the race before. He, he lost a horse in the race, and we shouldn't underplay that. But um, I think it'd be an ex- I think it'd be a stretch to say that um, this is the most sort of lovey-dovey operation. They run their horses and so they should and they should run him in the Grand National. Yeah, totally. And, and also the Grand National needs the two-time defending champion to come back it and does. try and do the three-peat because th- that's exactly the type of stuff that people get behind It has crossover appeal. So uh, this is the reminding, while there's still time, the English handicappers to go, don't screw us. So, you know, we're all in this together here. Right? Mm. Isn't that what it is? Yeah, yeah, although it is a handicap, and the handicapper has his job to do. Um, he's got his job to do. He's also got a bit of history to make. This is how pressure works. Very good for the race if he won it. This is the, exactly. Yeah, this is know. how pressure works. It's a win-win scenario here. He did have a little setback, as revealed in the last sort of twenty-four hours. So that's a bit of a concern. But post luckily, Brexit as well. Hmm. Post Brexit as well. Uh, Maybe. What's What's more likely, a Tiger Roll to win the Grand National in in April, or Brexit to have actually happened at that stage? I would say there's a much better chance of Brexit happening at that stage. Than Tiger Roll. I just think that it's fairly nailed on at this point what's going to happen, that there's going to be enough of that that uh, Tory Brexit party. Are we to thank Nigel Farage? I mean, I don't think anybody ever should say those words. I was looking at the, the betting for the election. The Lib Dems were 50 to 1. And I don't understand it enough, but I was like, surely if the Lib Dems were like, we're trying to oppose Brexit at all costs... I mean, if you had a vote tomorrow, would most people vote for Brexit or against it in Britain? Uh, I'd say it would finish fairly close with, mm. within the margin of error to what happened the last time. Mm. But um, I'm not going to let you tip the Lib Dems at 50 to 1 as your tip of the week here. They'll do better than the horses of late. Well, <laughs> they won't. That's just throwing bad money after bad money. Mm. <laughs> so anyway, a reminder, Tote customers can enjoy free tickets to Thurlis for the next meeting on the 21st of November. Check out thetote.com for more details. What have you gone for? I've gone for the Lib Dems, actually, to um, get a lick. <laughs> no, imagine if it came off. Don't they, stick they a five play, on that. They, don't, could, they don't. could play it in, in years to come. Um, as uh, No, so I'm going to go to Cork on Sunday. Uh, two horses took my eye, and um, Kevin McManus uh, has, is, has sponsored a race, which uh, JP has a couple of good runners in. Keep an eye out for them. But his horse in the... 2020 annual membership available handicap steeplechase Ishkabaha, which is Irish for whiskey. Whiskey. So oh, sorry, can, the water of life. Water of life, exactly. Uh, so the the whiskey shall be shall be shared around the bar in Mallow. Should Ishkabaha win, uh, I've done this race for the race and post uh, the 310 o'clock Cork Sunday. I was uh, in the top horse is Sumas Novios. is a very good horse, but probably wants further, and he's nearly 12. And uh, I was sort of disrespecting his chance a bit because of the trip but then I went down through the card and there's very little in the race except Ishkaba I think it looks a good opportunity for him to pick up uh, €14,750 for his owner JP McManus who probably doesn't need it Um, What kind of price will a JP McManus horse go off at in a race sponsored by that he he doesn't he doesn't sponsor this race, Kevin, but he does sponsor the earlier race. Okay. It depends on the JB's horse are hard to call in the market. Like he he had a few run against each other at the weekend, and the market was volatile, but it didn't necessarily get it right either. Um, could be five to two, maybe. Okay, yeah, it was disappointing when it's la- when it last ran, but Joseph for Brian trains it, and 
he can train winners anywhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right, so Ishkabaha, 10 past three in Cork on Sunday is uh, Johnny's tip this week. It is one of those beautiful Irish kind of names that like literally translates as something like water of, of life, which doesn't really feel like if you've had a lot of them the following morning. No, but, it's uh, the it, opposite. Yeah. But uh, anyway, you should go back. Yeah, OK, so that is hopefully going to contribute to the Tote Irish Injured Jockeys Fund. Uh, we've had a bad run, 10 in a row. We're going to break that this week. Ishkaba. Anything else you want to get off your chest? Uh, no, but, I mean, unfortunately in gambling, you go on bad runs and um, it's, it's psychologically it can be really, really strange in that when you're winning... Um, I was actually watching the, the Maradona documentary. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't seen it yet. No, I'm looking for yeah, it. Yeah, so there's a Maradona documentary on Netflix where he... I didn't even know this, but he went coaching a team in the second division in Mexico. Um, but he comes in and, you know, you're thinking... They, they, they initially say it's at the top of the show. Wherever the place he goes to is literally sort of the drug capital of Mexico. And yeah. you're like, mm, uh, kind of interesting. And then he comes in and he can barely walk because he's arthritis in both knees. So you're like, I don't know whether it's kind of wrong of, of one to suggest that Maradona might be a tactical genius, but you do have this in your head, but um, as it transpires anyway, his man management or, or at the very least him being there really rubs off on the players and his main striker is just like it's literally all it is is confidence, every time I, every game I go out now I just expect to score and the goal he said the goal opens up for me and he said like, me more or less was implying that before Maradona came along, it wasn't like that yeah. and betting is like that, when you have ten losers in a row you feel like you're going to have 11, whereas if you're winning every day, you feel like it comes easy. And the truth is obviously somewhere in between. But, it, you know, the best gamblers aren't necessarily the best form judges. They're the best who can deal with the highs and the lows. Apparently Maradona sits on a throne now when he's managing. So, you know, we can get you a throne. It might help break your duck or whatever. Well, I will say one thing. I'm two episodes in and... He doesn't seem to have done any drugs yet, so you're kind of just hoping that it, the upper, he's, he, where I am now, they're they're playing an important game, and um, he's been sort of suspended for histrionics after the first leg. So I don't know what's going to happen in the second, but I, I guess many people listening in have gotten on to episode three at this stage. Very good. We'll uh, tune in next week at the same time for more on the Maradona documentary and hopefully some more winners as well. And Friday night racing, yeah. <laughs> Friday night racing and off the ball brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie. We'll be back after these. Friday Night Racing on Off The Ball. And Brought to you by Horse Racing Ireland. Love every racing moment. Visit hri.ie.